best encapsulated by a less famous phrase from Stephen Novella, neuropsychological humility. We need to be aware of things that I just mentioned and all that we hear, and most importantly, in what we say and think. Skepticism, when viewed this way, is primarily introspective. I find the perspective of being a, a skeptic gives me to be both valuable and troublesome. Valuable because it allows me to see the manipulation when others don't, and annoying for essentially the same reason. When I point out errors in logic of some atheist argument on Facebook, they assume I'm religious. This has led, as some of you might imagine, to some rather strange exchanges. We're all susceptible to many forms of manipulation. Several of these prey on our poor sense of scale. I suspect all of us know that it is impossible to tell how far away an object is in the sky once it is to our vision, just a dot. It could be small, close, and traveling slowly. It could be large, far away, and traveling at high speed. This is important in what are now called UAP reports. But related effects occur in lots of other circumstances. Take, for example, the headlines that followed. The Fukushima nuclear power mishap. Oh good, everything worked. I suspect that most people who saw the news about this were concerned. How could you not? Fukushima radiation found in California milk, fruit, and vegetables. My reaction was different. I thought, wow, we're really good at finding really tiny amounts of radioactive materials. <laughs> Without any information about how much of the material was found and how it relates to safe levels, the fact that the material had been detected tells us nothing. The amounts were incredibly small, just above detectable levels, and far below that which would cause concern. Another example, I'm sure all of you have heard of this, is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Yes. Currents in the Pacific Ocean <coughs> cause an increased concentration of surface material. Estimates place the amount of material at around 80,000 80, metric tons. Some reports of this are accompanied by images like this one. It shows a layer of trash floating on the water. Extreme portrayals describe it as solid enough to walk across. Yeah. The stated size of this patch is 2 million square kilometers. Often this size is highlighted by pointing out that it is twice the size of Texas. I also seen it as three times the size of France. Not sure which I like better. The large area, this indicates a large problem. Unless you pay attention to the fact that the larger the patch, the smaller the concentration. So how much is this really? If you take 80,000 metric tons and spread it out over 80 million square kilometers, that's 5 micrograms per cc or per, per square centimeter. It's, it's nothing. It's essentially nothing. If you took a boat through the densest part of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, you would see water only. Every once in a while, you might see a discarded fishing net. But that's it. One of the ways that we can be fooled is due to our tendency towards what is called hyperactive agency detection. How many of you have heard of the Heider Simmel illusion? No. Heidel Simmer illusion. Heider Simmel. Good. So this is a, a movie made in 1944. It, I'm not going to prime you, although it would be better if I did, but what this story is.
Okay. okay. So what is the city? I, I don't know. Who, who wants it? So there are two triangles, a big triangle, a small triangle, and a, and a circle. Right. Who can tell me something about the big triangle? It's aggressive. So, there's a, so everyone that sees this has similar stories, really? whether it's a dad, a boyfriend, and a girlfriend, or a daughter, or it's a father, a son, and a mother, but you've got some aggression going on, and, and an argument, and a fight, and at one point the circle is trying to hide, but the, the big triangle comes in and attacks, and, the smaller triangle comes in to um, protect them and all that stuff. It's a triangle, another triangle, and a circle. There's no one there. There's nothing there. But we can't help but see it. So this is a form of something sort of similar to a word I'm sure most of you have heard, pareidolia. Mm -hmm. You're all familiar with pareidolia. It's the tendency for us to find patterns that aren't there. This is most commonly cited example show faces where none exist. Oh, wow. Or entire human figures. <laughs> or ones that are slightly rude. Some that are menacing, and some that are just sad. <laughs> There's another illusion, I don't know the name of this one, that causes us to fall for a certain class of errors, like this. So what does that say? I love Paris in the, the springtime. Yeah, it does not say, I love Paris in the springtime. It says, I love Paris in the, the springtime. And if you haven't seen this before, you almost certainly did not notice the double the. Our tendency to project intent to inanimate objects is so pervasive that it, in, it saturates our language. We talk about water seeking its own level. Evolution favoring the fittest, and a plethora of other examples, and it takes significant effort to talk about inanimate objects in a way that doesn't imbue them with will. There are many other examples of this, but I want to look in some more detail at something that we talked about a little bit earlier. I think that some combination of these factors is that work in evaluations of ChatGPT in specific and AI in general. I hear people who have credentials indicating that they have real expertise in this field saying things like, ChatGPT understands, or ChatGPT thinks. The effects mentioned above combined with the long history that humans are the only things that use language mean that we can't help but see intelligence and agency behind it even when it's not there. So I had this interaction with ChatGPT 3.5. After listening to a podcast by one of today's speakers, um, I said that ChatGPT was really good at writing code. So I asked ChatGPT to write a Python program to compute pi by the Vietes approximation. Don't worry about what that is. The program it output gave me the answer to. <laughs> I responded this was incorrect, and it apologized and output functionally the same program. After a few more times, I thought, hmm, maybe it doesn't know what Vietes approximation is, and that's why it's giving me the wrong answer. And that's, in fact, what was wrong. 
Um, I tried it again uh, after giving it some more hints to tell it what Vieta's approximation was, and it still did it wrong. Um, this example is, is pretty wonderful. Um, I don't know if you can read it all the way in the back. So I asked, why does blog start with a B? And ChatGPT responded, the word blog is a shortening of a weblog. It's believed the term weblog was coined in the late 1990s, and over time it was shortened to blog. That all makes perfect sense. The B in blog likely comes from the first letter of web. <laughs> Yes, it did. It did. It did make a mistake. Um, this failed the Turing test, rather, rather dramatically. They make different kinds of mistakes. So, the the message here, and I, I left a lot of time for for questions. The the message here is. It's always been important to be skeptical. It's always been important to look at ways that people can be trying to fool you and the ways in which our tendencies fool ourselves. But that's gotten a lot more dangerous recently. And uh, for me, that's the most important part of being a skeptic. It's to protect yourself and to protect those you love, those you are friends with, and just society in general. So I open it up to questions, and thank you. <laughs>